Okay. So, uh, thank you very much for RS21 for having us. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to have so many of you here since it's been a very busy week in Catalan politics. And, you know, well, we say that um, Catalan politics has now become like dog years, if you may. Uh, one normal year, or even well, one day, is a month in Catalan politics nowadays. So, what I'm going to try to explain to you today is a bit uh, about this works. It's a bit about what is, how is the Catalan movement, um, you know, how is it made of? What is it made of and who conforms it? And comparing to most of Spain, we have a very, very, uh, how can I say, very active political uh, arch. And look later, we'll give you more detail about those. But I just wanted there to, because there's so many names and stuff like that, that I prefer that you have a clear, like, visual idea. So, the big question on everyone's minds, and especially in an audience such as distinguishes this one is, is there a little nationalistic element to all this Catalan movement? Because obviously we're asking for a nation, but is there a nationalistic element? Or is this whole you know, movement, Catalan, uh, Catalan movement nationalistic? So the first question is, is the Catalan movement nationalist in their majority? The quick answer is no, not at all, not by any means. Does it have a nationalistic element? By all means, every movement has that. And if you look at you know different movements such as Quebec and Scotland, we find these little pockets of nationalism in there. Now the Catalan movement is a bit more um, it's a bit more complex than you know the Quebecian one or the Scottish one because in those terms in those cases they were led by one party only mainly. In our case we have you know a number of parties. So it does have a nationalistic element, but the problem with nationalism is that we tend to limit the kind of meaning of it. We try, we try to like grab it with our hands and find something bad to say about it and throw it away. Now, I'm not a nationalist by any means. I consider myself a pro-independent, and I think so do my peers. But there is an element there that has to be discussed and has to be explained. But it's in no way or shape or form the kind of like limit idea that we have about nationalism. So I'll explain that. So when we come to Catalan independence, we have two approaches. We have one, the classic uh, nationalistic approach, which when it comes to mind, you probably think of things like chauvinistic approach, Excessive and unreasonable patriotism, um, as is more commonly known, the other is us, the pro independence stance, or how we like to call it, independent distance. Our pro independence movement is a movement left from the left and the civil society, while the nationalist pocket is more to the right. And Pedecat, who used to be uh, the blue one, 18, who used to be Convergencia Union, now it's kind of that's them. That's kind of like, if you may, it will be like the Lib Dems, which are the sister party in the UK. Okay, and they're also part of the uh, European Liberal uh, conglomerate. We have, uh, you know, also Ciudadanos, funnily enough, is also part of that party. So that's a bit of like funny place for them to be. Um, so the first one thinks about Catalonia. Uh, the first one, the nationalist, thinks of Catalonia as something of a excellent and unique place uh, where the Catalans are the best in the world and we do everything best, and that's not what we're all about. Okay. And while that is a very limit, limiting way of viewing nationalism, there is a degree of that, and we don't have to hide it. The thing is, um, our movement, or Les Coupes movement, is a pro-independence movement. Um, you know, we proclaim that there's no democratic solution to the current state of affairs in Catalonia. We've tried hard. It's been about more than 30 years. We're trying to find that, that balance, you know, where other nations in Spain, not only the Catalan, but the Basque, the Galician, um, could fit in, and we could have something like, you know, very very extreme example, but in Switzerland, where every kind of language and culture is respected, okay? So you have the Italian, you have the German canton, you have the Romance, they're all respected. If you, I love to use this symbology, if you grab a packet of cigarettes, and obviously you shouldn't smoke, and you open it up, you'll find it in four languages, every time. There's a respect there that we haven't had in Spain at all. So in our case, the problem with Catalonia it's not a problem of survival of the fittest, it's not a question of financial survival, it's also a cultural survival. We are fighting for our lives in terms of culture. And we are leading the way at this time, where other nations in Spain have done it before. So, why does the coup believe, or why does the left uh, movement believe that there is no solution to this current problem in Spain, and why can we just not have one of those debates where we negotiate, we negotiate, you know, you give and take and it's sorted. Well, the first problem is the constitution. As my colleague Ona has pretty explained, this constitution is the one that, with the Article 155, allowed 
for people to be put in prison for their ideas. So the first two people to be put in prison are civil activists. All they were doing, they were on top of a police car with the permission of the police and they were trying to open the ways the police could go and demonstrators would leave them alone. They said they were inciting violence. So there we go. In, in jail while being investigated, they haven't been tried properly, or they have, you know, there's no final say from the judge. That's gone to a different court. So this constitution has proven to be not very useful so far. If you have a look at where this constitution comes from, so whenever you want to look at where history you know, takes us, like if you want to know what happens now, let's take a bit step back. This constitution is what we call the 78 constitution. It was drafted just as soon as Mr. Uh, the dictator of Spain, Franco, died. And while this was being drafted by Democrats, okay, and they, are, they were Democrats, the majority of them, next door they had a group of, um, of uh, military people just making sure that you know, everything was going smoothly. And if things don't go smoothly, then, you know, we do that thing we do so well. It's called, oh yeah, the coup d'etat, like we just did in 36 to 39. So no problem there. Um, I'm sure this constitution was written with the best of will, but obviously the context at the time was not the best and it was not the most democratic by any means. Okay, at that time, the ex-king of Spain, Juan Carlos, first, uh, had been appointed by the dictator himself to say, you shall lead the way. And he's, up to not long ago, he was the current head of state in Spain. Although we call our Prime Minister the President, the head of state is the king. So now his son is the king of Spain. Okay? Now, how can you ever have a democratic state when you're being babysitted in such manner? Because this constitution is, you know, to our understanding, Franco's, Franco's legacy. He left it there, and he left it there to be, you know, a united Spain that will never be broken. But we've gone forward. We've uh, argued with the right. We've had our differences. Um, for many, many years, we've become, you know, the kind of the, the devil to them because we propose things like equality, you know, equality of pay for women, equality of pay for everyone, trying to get the salary. I mean, it's kind of those kinds of things that sound normal, but obviously, to the liberal right, it doesn't sound very good. So for that, we've we found, we've, we've fought them. Now, how do these two opposites work together in the same movement for independence? So, you know, to be honest with you, PDECAT, aka Convergencia Union, has had a hand in almost every single democratic Spanish government since the restoration of democracy. Okay? Whether they were Tories or whether they were Labour. Okay? There was no difference. Okay? Them and the Basque nationalists. They were kind of the add-on that you need in order to get your full majority, okay? They've always been there, so they wouldn't mind really if it was left or right, and hence the possibility that the Labour Party and the Conservative Party of Spain, Partido Socialista Español and Partido Popular, are maybe not that different now when it comes to reacting to what's happening in Catalonia, because they've always kind of, you know, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn thing. So, while nationalistic movements share many things in common, it will also be wrong for us to throw in the same kind of sack, okay? Um, why? Because during the dictatorship, the people who founded the current movement were put in jail. They were put in jail for their ideas. Some of them were tortured, okay? And that's no joke. So people who come from this background, you know, we can just not, like, point the finger at them and say, oh, you're a fascist, or oh, you're this or that. Because they've suffered, okay? Now, while they, we don't agree with the economic policies they propose, we can't disagree with the fact that, you know, they come from a similar place as we did. That's called illegality, when parties were illegal in Spain for a long time. So, Catalanism, with all its faults and neoliberal agenda, as we know, is not exclusive. It does not seek to differentiate people by colour or religion or creed. Okay? Catalan nationalist parties and their founders have suffered, as I said, the same, you know, prison and the same problems with it, or our founders did under Franco. They've also been beaten up in some instances, and you know, and they're consisting probably to you know the Lib, 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 the Lib Dems in the UK. So please take the idea away that we are working with someone who is racist and exclusive and tries to like have people sent away. That's not what it is, okay? But they're still liberal. Don't forget that. <laughs> of course. So what do we want? So our struggle is to have the right to decide, and therefore our own state nation. We can see ourselves as a nation because we're the people of a nation. The problem is, without the state, 
You can't do very much in Europe. And even when you're a state, see what happens with Greece. So you need the two in order to take the fight to the arena. It's a necessary uh, evil, if you may. So in our case, while the nationalists have been concentrating on, you know, the liberal agenda, we've been concentrating on the fights and struggles of other people. We share the burdens that the Palestinian people share, you know, we understand where the fight comes from. We, we have many people that go there and we build projects together to help them. We have the same struggle with the people in Greece. And we're not talking about any kind of movement in particular. We're talking about the people in Greece that at the moment are suffering while we're talking here. We're talking about people in Greece that decided that they want a government and they didn't want the Troika's kind of financial, I say punishment, because there's no other word to explain it. And they're suffering it. We unite with those movements. We, we know where they are. We feel them, they're brothers and sisters, by all means. So the idea that we're trying to create a state in order to impose more boundaries kind of falls in separate part because of our history that precedes us. There's no way that nobody can accuse us of trying to build boundaries where the first thing we did when the crisis hit with the, um, with the Syrian people, we said, come, you're welcome to Catalonia. Guess who stopped us from welcoming those people? Spanish state. So what is your objective, you may ask? So the objective is for a fairer society that includes equal pay for men and women alike, that welcomes victims of wars or political prosecution. It doesn't matter. We aim to close the pay gap between workers, a society that has free education for all and is included regardless of where you come from. In fact, it wasn't us, but the nationalists, these guys over here that you saw earlier, that said, Catalan is he or she who works and or lives in Catalonia. So that means anyone. If you go and live in Catalonia, you become a Catalan. End of story. So, how do we achieve it? So in order to achieve this fair and equal society, we need to work with those that in most issues we share profound disagreement with. The liberal Peter Cata Puigdemont, the current incumbent president that we recognize as the president because he's been ousted by the government. Um, Puigdemont. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so in most issues, we, we, prefer, uh, we share a profound disagreement with the Pentecat. But we have a basic agreement that, you know, we both want to play this in the arena of democracy. We should play this in the arena of democracy, and we all have, we both share basic democratic values. And I think that's enough if you just want to give a blank state to people and say, here you go, <coughs> choose. Tell us what sort of state you're looking for, okay? So why are we still working to, we're still willing to work temporarily with this kind of like, you know, liberal evil? It is because only when we aim to include everyone in the discussion, we will have a true civil society, and the civil society will run itself. Only when we aim to include everyone in the discussion, and we add context of a blank slate possibly, a procedure process is possible. We cannot say no to people just because they think differently to us. We need to convince them with arguments democratic arguments. We cannot just say, oh, well, you think alike, you're a bit to the centre-left or centre-right, we don't agree with you. No. The Republic of Catalonia will be for everyone, or it will not be. Can Catalonia survive? That's my final thing, and I'll stop here. Um, i really like to pose this question to you, in plural. Can we survive? Because survival of Catalonia is not the survival of a flag. It's not the survival of nationalists or leftists of socialists. It's the survival of the capacity to move people and get that struggle going forward. We have seen in Catalonia, what we have seen there is certainly special, but it's in no way exclusive or it derives from some sort of paranormal activity or superpower. These were not done by superhumans or higher ethical beings. This only happened because people felt, for the first time, that the voice mattered. And the more they got used to being heard, the more they wanted. And the less the political class enjoyed that. Because since the beginning, when this journey started seven years ago, you know, many of the political elites would not believe that a, you know, a referendum would have gone through. Up to a month ago, they still believed that they wouldn't have to go through with it. We have shown it is possible. We ask you not only to support us, but to help us build that change. Catalonia alone will not make this a better world. It is a world working together that will better itself with a united effort. Thank you.